of asking the why. You know, again, going back to what Jonathan said, most higher education, again, intentional, Jonathan, absolutely true, focuses on the how. How to do this, how to do that, how to do the other. And again, I'm all, all for higher education guys. But they don't teach the why. And so what ends up happening? People who know how end up working for or making less money than people who know why. So Greenlight's approach is all about the answers to the why. Again, is it nice to know how? Absolutely. But you better know why if you want to be the person holding most of the money at the end of that transaction. Otherwise, your pockets are going to be hanging inside out and the guy or the gal that knows why is going to have most of the money. And so that's how it works. So yes, um, Jonathan, the intentional, systematic, not racial, but economic um, uh, 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 illusion of what's important and priority and what's not is at the center of why we do this whole tour in the first place. You know, and why generally, while well, we haven't charged in two and a half years, not one dime, we go on the road and spend, <laughs> we spend a lot of money and then we come down to the local economy and let's put it this way, we support the local economy. Okay, some malls get burned down, so if you see fire engines going, then you just say, okay, green lights in town. We, we have a good time, but it's all about empowering each and every one of you. Whether we have a coaching, rapport, relationship with you, with you, which we would love, or you just leave here tonight further empowered, I'll feel like I've done my job in terms of helping you get on the road to financial freedom but you have to have a mentor. And again, and I'm talking to our people of color in the room. You're black, you're brown, you're beige. Um, you need mentors, you need a coach. I had a coach. Every year or two, I get a high-end coach. I just finished up a two-year uh, coaching relationship with Dr. Uh, Julian Sturt. You wanna know what Julian Sturt is? He coaches people who run billion dollar enterprises. He coaches the uh, Ambassador General of the United Nations, the, the CEO of Shell Oil. And of course he's not cheap, okay? Um, but coaches have coaches. He doesn't coach me on the whole BMW thing, business money and wealth. He's a leadership coach, he's a strategist. He changes my perspective to help be a better coach for my clients. And, and again, we have to invest in ourselves. So again, going back to Jonathan's point, if you want to have true literacy that's not in the same traditional vein, look, doing what you've always done will get you what you've always got. So if you're getting what you want, don't change a thing. But if you know there's a little bit more in the tank, if you know that you can reach even higher financial trajectories and momentums, then it's worth your time and effort to you know, solicit uh, and acquire a coach. There's only two ways to succeed, and it's all about wisdom, right? If you want to succeed, in, how many people in the room are, 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 are business owners? Pretty much 80% of the room. There's a lot of success elements in business, right? And we all know, no matter how successful your business is, it's not easy, right guys? You guys make it look easy, and the people who observe you say, wow, they envy you because they don't see all the hard work and the dedication and the sacrifice and, of course, the money you put into the business. You know, maybe your credit got distressed when you first started the business. But the number one approach and success factor is you must acquire wisdom. Two ways to acquire it. You can go through the school of hard knocks, right? Very expensive probably going to end up as a statistic, right? And so that's where that 70 plus percent of all businesses, not some, not many, of all businesses failed in the first couple of years, right? Um, or you could get it through a coach, right? You could get it through a coach. So that's a lot more uh, cost effective, less disruptive to your life and money, and uh, you're going to be more successful. Because in order to keep the business, and the business owners who've been in business for years know what I'm talking about, you need to know the future, right? 
you need to know the future. What's around the corner? How can you know the future if you're just super intelligent? That's a great trait. If you got great capital, that's wonderful, but you can burn through capital. I've seen it uh, many times. Um, you got a great team of product, all that great stuff, but if you don't know what's around the future, if you don't know what's around the corner, what's in the future, you know, it's going to limit your chances. The Fortune 500 companies keep recycling the same 500 executives. An executive at Nabisco will come to IBM. He doesn't know anything about computers, but he knows the stuff I'm talking about. Okay, that combined with his uh, top flight team of Harvard and Ivy League school uh, MBAs who know how produces a juggernaut, right? IBM. Uh, Lou Gerstner left Nabisco, knew nothing about computers. This is like 15, 20 years ago. He didn't even have a personal computer in his house. IBM has not seen that stock price since Lou left. They went to the height over the whole history of IBM. They have not got to that stock price height. And this is a guy who knew the food business, cookies and, and other things. So he didn't have to know how. He knew why. So first thing you need to do is acquire wisdom. Again, you might have subject matter experience in your field. Your coach may not have that subject matter experience. But he would bring the different perspective to you to get you to the next level. Um, we like a lot of sports analogies at Greenlight. You know, being where BMW coaches, we like sports analogies. So for you sports fans, any basketball fans in the room? OK, few. You guys might recall when Kobe and Shaq first got to L.A. together. They were in L.A. for three years. No Phil Jackson yet. How many rings did they win? No. Zero. None. Who says? Then you got Phil Jackson. He was, what, 60 years old at that point? I'm sure he wasn't running up and down the floor, right? He got there the first year. What happened the first year? Chip. Chip. And then he got a number of more. So the, buying into the philosophy and success formula of a coach is very important. Phil Jackson talked to Kobe, he talked to Shaq, he said you guys are tremendous specimens, tremendous athletes, tremendously talented, but you're never going to win a championship. So you can be tremendously talented and be on the human highlight film every night, or you could follow my advice and insight and win some chips. So that's what they did. And so both of those guys are going to be in the Hall of Fame. Kobe's still playing, but both are going to be in the Hall of Fame because they were champions, not just because they were great players, okay? So, I hope that gives a little more insight. Anybody at this table have any questions? Let's move to this table. Okay. Let's turn the cameras around. Billy. Uh, would you, um, um, also, everybody knows who Jonathan is. Just tell us who you are, what you do. Good afternoon. My name is Sabrina Anderson. I'm actually a program manager for Lockheed Martin. So I actually, when they were reading your resume, I actually sounded just like one. <laughs> Except for that billionaire part. <laughs> so, we'll go try right. to change that tonight. So my question is, what was the turning point for you? What was the point where you said, hey, you know, I've got the experience and everything, and I want to branch out and make Green Life success? Great question, Sabrina. Um, there were three turning points for me. First and foremost, I got laid off from my job. I can tell you right now, the swashbuckling and uh, business money and wealth coach you see now, that's not where I started, y'all, 25 years ago. My knees were shaking at the time. I was married. I had, you know, a mortgage and two cars, and my, my oldest son was probably about two years old, and I got called unceremoniously into the vice chairman's office of the company I was working for and told, you know, I'm being laid off. Now, first and foremost, Sabrina, I was very confused because I just brought in $2 million in uh, project revenues just six to eight months earlier. I was like, well, take it out of that. That's too million, take it out of that. I'm any grant, take it out of that. They weren't listening to me. <laughs> so, my, so what I did was my first motivation, Sabrina, I'm sorry, guys, was revenge. <laughs> was revenge. I'm going to show them. You need something that's going to move you to where you're either going to win or you're going to die. Notice I say try. You either do or don't do. There's no such thing as try. 
you're either gonna do it or you're gonna die. But you're not going to, you know, feed up. Failure is not an option. So that's what got me there. So first was revenge. Then as I was bumping along and languishing and eating ramen noodles, I never want to see another box of ramen noodles ever again. Ever. You could do some very innovative things with ramen noodles, guys, which I'll share with you if you care to hear them. Ramen noodles could be like rice, you could make it like linguine, but I'm, not, I'm only being partially humorous. So, I got tired of the languishing, but just because you're sick and tired of being sick and tired doesn't mean things are going to change. But as I began to get these principles, and one thing I'll mention to everybody, this was a subconscious and subliminal thing. What I'm telling you now has been beautifully, uh, cohesively coordinated and brought together and properly languished and simplified. Back then it was just, the rich guy told me to do this, so I'm going to do that. You know, or the rich lady told me to do that, so I'm going to do that. And I might not do the full execution of it, and I go, well, it didn't produce what you wanted. It was good, but and what, did you do it on a Thursday, under the blue moon? No, go back. And so I go back, and so I had a little laboratory to, to experiment with these principles. It wasn't until I retired and cashed out to eight figures 10 years ago, because I'm 53 years old, as this past August. Um, that I said, how in the world did you do that? You weren't rich. You didn't have the complexion for the connection, right? You didn't, y'all know what I mean. If not, think about it, it'll, it'll safely come to you on the way home. Didn't have the complexion for the connection. Didn't have any money. Didn't have any money, y'all. No money. You don't need money to make money. Stop believing the lies. You don't need money to make money. You need money to make more money. You can make millions of dollars with little to no money. And you can go to the pages of newspapers and magazines and go on the internet, you'll see thousands of examples of people who made millions of dollars with little to no money. So don't tell me you need money to make money. That's a racket. That's a background conversation. You need money to make more money. So you can start with little to nothing, bring it up to a certain level. At some point, you're going to say, I, I need some money, y'all. Because I'm at half a million. I'm at a million. I can't make a dollar more because I need to hire people and da 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 da. But you don't need money to make money. You need money to make more money. So at the end of the day, Sabrina, it was being laid off. It was languishing and saying, you know what, I need to be mentored. And again, it was kind of like Robert Karasaki's journey. Only he had one rich dad and one poor dad. His poor dad was biological, the rich dad was his neighbor, right? Well, I had one poor dad, my father, my biological father. He was a, um, a bus driver for the New York Transportation Authority for 25 years. Um, and then I had thousands of rich dads and rich moms. And that made the difference. And that's what this, 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 this whole system is all about. It's the accumulated, streamlined, and simplified uh, uh, secrets of the rich. So, so that's what got me there. It was kind of like three milestones. And, uh, and uh, they all had a different motivational <laughs> level. OK, let me see if there are any curious people at this table. Remember, we're, we're going to get into creating wealth in the next thing. Okay, this set, this table is very curious. Who are you? What do you do? And then we'll come to you. Excuse me, my name is Perry Smith, and I'm in the financial services and insurance business, so I actually try to help people protect the assets too. But my question to you, Terrence, yes. is you, um, you're doing very well right now. Since you cashed out for this eight-figure income or assets. Have you had any downturns in your life or in your business that where you had to fight back to get back to where you were? That's a great question. Perry Smith, right? Yes. That's a great question, Perry. You know, being an entrepreneur is like a high wire app, right? It's like a high wire app. There's no such thing as you don't have some disappointments. Because if entrepreneurs, I have had entrepreneurs have told me, I've never had to worry about payroll. My answer, 
that you never had any papers. <laughs> I can tell you back in my computer business, which was doing about a million dollars every 10 days. Somebody asked me, what was your, your best day, you know, sales, revenue in one day, single day? I said, I remember it like yesterday. I said, because it was preceded by my worst financial day. <laughs> The day before, I had $1,000 in my corporate bank account. Not any more zeros, guys. Don't think I'm, I'm being cute. $1,000. And I remember one of my, my VP of sales, and you know, I was encouraging him, coded, beating him to bring in some money. And I hinted there might be a problem with payroll. And he was making like $7,000 a month base out. I had acquired him from a Verizon Enterprise uh, division. And so that was like two weeks ago. And so now it's coming up on payday. This is Thursday, payday's tomorrow. And so he just wanted to make sure everything's gonna be fine like it always is, right? Because they don't see all the drama, and you guys have payroll know what I'm talking about, that goes on before payroll, you know? So he said, well, is everything gonna be fine? And I said, well, what do you mean by fine? We have $1,000 in our corporate account. He said, good Lord, what are we going to do? I said, I know you better sell. I know what I <laughs> My job's already spoken for. He said, so what's going to happen? And I said, well, God's going to show up. He said, what do you mean? God's going to show up. See, at your core, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a very spiritual person. And you must be working on your core while you're working on your money. Money only makes you more of who you already are. So if you are generous and kind and positive, you come into some money, you're going to be more generous. You're going to be more kind. You're going to be more positive. But if you don't have your core worked on, you are coming to some money. You know what I'm talking about. You come into some money, you're going to start abusing people, right? You're going to get arrogant. You're going to be vain. And I tell my clients all the time, look, and I don't come from a, a religious reason when I talk to people about pride, ego, arrogance, uh, and vanity. I say, look, pride, ego, arrogance, and vanity cost you. You pay a premium for that. They'll make you do things in business you shouldn't be doing. And they will discourage you from doing the things you should. So they are not good for business. So it's not a, it's not a morality thing. It's just they're not good for business. I've seen people turn down tremendous opportunities because of pride, ego, vanity. Some of the richest men I know, 700 million, 800 million. I was part of a, 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 a private investors network in New York called the Tri-State Pen Private Investors Network. And I came into that, you had to be worth five million dollars, I was like seven million dollars at that point. Um, let's just say most of the people didn't look like most of the people in this room, okay? And so I was the only one in the group and they thought I was mute for two years. For two years, guys, I didn't say a word. I took notes, I listened, I went got the worst place to take me, guys, if you're in a hurry, is a bookstore, right? That's the worst place to take Terrence Cash. Because you're gonna be there a while. Get a big glass of water, matter of fact, get a sandwich, water, chips, because we're gonna be a while. I mean, it's true. That's all about your success formula. You look, if you want me to tell you who you are and where you're going, Tell me what books you read, number one. Tell me you have, who you hang out with, who you spend time with, and tell me how you spend your time and your money, and I'll tell you who you are and where you go. So if you're not putting the right things in, to what? Enhance and establish your core, then the money can come and you're gonna be abusing people. Uh, you know, the money will come and uh, you're not gonna be in alignment with that money. Uh, somebody uh, snuck up to me while you weren't looking and gave me a question for me to ask you. So where can we find all these hidden principles? Okay. I got two choices for you. So listen very carefully. Great question. Whoever, who, who asked that question? Okay. Oh, wow. She's shy. What's your name? Annette. Annette. Okay. So where can we hide, find these hidden principles? Here's the thing, Annette. You will never hear me use the word information. And anybody that comes to me it, and to Greenlights, you got 27 world-class professionals that work for and with Greenlight. Um, we don't give you information. We give you knowledge. We give you wisdom. We give you insight. Why do I stay away from the word information? Information is cheap 